Hello, I'm Jennifer Wilcox. I'm the Educational Coordinator at the National Cryptologic Museum at the National Security Agency. Welcome to Revolutionary Secrets, Cryptology in the American Revolution. In this, our final episode, we're looking at something a little different from standard cryptography. We're looking into steganography, or hidden messages. Where cryptography changes a message through encoding or encryption, steganography hides the message, sometimes in plain sight. For example, this is a letter written by Benedict Arnold as he was plotting with the British to sell West Point. It is not in a code, but the meaning of his message is disguised as an ordinary business letter. He discusses a request for an upcoming meeting to authorize a commercial plan. In part, the letter reads, A speculation might at this time be easily made to some advantage with ready money, but there is not the quantity of goods at market which your partner seems to suppose, and the number of speculators below, I think, will be against your making an immediate purchase. I apprehend goods will be in greater plenty and much cheaper in the course of the season. Although apparently discussing the sale of goods, to the British the meaning of the message was entirely different. Arnold warns that West Point doesn't have the number of men Clinton seems to believe, and with the Americans, the speculators nearby, now would not be a good time to move. The message concludes that Arnold expects things to improve shortly. This letter was given to an innocent courier who knew nothing of the contents. However, he was suspicious of Arnold's directions for its delivery. So instead, he passed the message to a general in the Continental Army. As Arnold hoped, should the letter be opened by someone other than the British, the Continental General thought it was a simple correspondence and didn't think much about it. He didn't pass it on to General Washington until after Arnold's traitorous actions were discovered. The British used a few different methods of steganography during the Revolutionary War, and two of them involved General John Burgoyne in the summer of 1777. Burgoyne proposed a plan to take Albany. He would bring his troops south from Quebec while well, another column came through the Mohawk Valley of central New York, and General Howe's troops would advance north from New York City. They would combine their forces and take Albany, cutting New England off from the rest of the colonies. However, this was not to be. After General Washington's victories in Trenton and Princeton, New Jersey, Sir William Howe received permission to take Philadelphia. He made General Burgoyne aware of his change of plans using a steganographic method. He inserted the long, narrow messages into large, hollow, quill-feather pens. His message was not encrypted, simply hidden. Part of his note read, Washington is waiting our motions here. My intention is for Pennsylvania, where I expect to meet Washington. But if he goes to the northward, you can keep him at bay. Be assured I shall soon be after him to relieve you. Sir Henry Clinton remains in command here and will act as occurrences may direct. Even Henry Clinton believed Howe's move unwise. In another secret message to Burgoyne, Clinton expresses his concern. However, his words are cleverly disguised as approval. You will have heard, dear sir, I doubt not long before this can have reached you, that Sir William Howe is gone from hence. The rebels imagine that he has gone to the eastward. By this time, however, he has filled Chesapeake Bay with surprise and terror. Washington marched the greater part of his rebels to Philadelphia in order to oppose Sir William's army. I hear that he has now returned upon finding none of our troops landed, but I am not sure of this. Great part of his troops are returned for certain. I am sure this counter-marching must be ruin to them. I am left to command here. Half my force may, I am sure, defend everything here with much safety. I shall therefore send Sir William four or five battalions. I have too small a force to invade the New England provinces. They are too weak to make any effectual efforts against me, and you do not want any diversion in your favor. I can, therefore, very well spare him 1,500 men. I shall try something certainly towards the close of the year, not until then at any rate. It may be of use to inform you that report says all yields to you. I own to you that I think the business will quickly be over now. Sir William's move just at this time has been capital. Washington's have been the worst they could take in every respect. Sincerely, give you much joy on your success, and am, with great sincerity, your H.C. The actual message, however, is hidden within. It can be revealed through the use of a mask. With the mask in place, the message Henry Clinton relays is vastly different than the full letter. Sir so William Howe has gone to the Chesapeake Bay with the great parts of the army. I hear he has landed, but am not certain. I am left to command here with too small a force to make any effectual diversion in your favor. I shall try something at any rate. It may be of use to you. 
I own to you, I think Sir William's move just at this time is the worst he could take. Much joy on your success. These masked messages may have been England's most successful form of written communication, since it provided no discernible patterns. However, they were difficult to construct. The mask is laid over a blank paper, and the true message is written within, the open space. Then the mask is removed, and the rest of the letter is composed around the true message. This can be quite difficult, since the letter must make sense when read even without the mask. However, if done properly, it can effectively protect information. In our final segment of Revolutionary Secrets and our look at steganography, we'll learn how invisible ink was used by the British and the Americans, and some spies. Try this revolutionary activity. Make your own secret message mask. Cut out a shape in a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be an hourglass. Put it on top of a blank sheet of paper. Write a secret message in the open space. Remove the mask. Try to compose a letter that makes sense around the message you already have. It's not easy, 